right, so we're starting today with 3.3, which is common factors of a polynomial. And we're just going to start by writing down some definitions as we go. So please take a moment to copy down these notes as to what a polynomial is, a monomial, binomial, and a trinomial. Then we're going to move on to the next part, which is some stuff from Math 9. We're going to go through how to add and subtract polynomials, just to kind of refresh. All right, so start by writing this first part down. We're going to combine like terms by adding their coefficients together. So here I've got an 8x plus 7, and I'm adding it to a 3x squared plus 2x minus 3. So first, let's look at what terms are like terms. So again, like terms have the same variable with the same degree. So 8x can be combined with another term that has just an x on it. So the 2x. And then I'm going to add them together. So I have an 8x and a 2x. So when I add them together, I would get 10x's in total. I also see that here that I have a 7, and I can combine that with the negative 3, because both of those don't have an x, so they would be like terms. So when I have a positive 7 plus a negative 3, I'd get a plus 4. And then looking at the only other term I've got left there is a 3x squared, but there's no other x squared term to combine that with. So I would just have the 3x squared. Now finally, again, I don't like the order of this. You should always try to order these trinomials from highest power to lowest power. So the 3x squared is the highest power. So I'm going to write the 3x squared in the front, plus the 10x will go in the middle, and plus the 4 will go at the end, because the 4 does not have a variable with an exponent on it. All right, so we're going to then go to subtracting polynomials. So we've got our example here. The big thing is that when we're subtracting, you have to subtract both or all of the pieces in that back bracket. So I have to subtract the 2n squared, and I have to subtract the negative 4n. So the easiest thing to do here is to use our subtracting sign, like a negative sign, okay, and deal with the signs that we have. So we start with the 3n squared plus the 7n, but when I subtract the 2n squared, I'd write that as a minus 2n squared. But then when I subtract a negative 4n, subtract a negative, what would happen there to my sign? It would add, right. So I'm going to change that to a plus 4n. So that's where the subtracting is a little bit different, because this sign, this negative sign, it has to get applied to both of those pieces. Now we can go through like adding and just combine like terms. So the 3n squared can go with the negative 2n squared. So 3n squared minus 2n squared is 1n squared. And then I have here my 7n and my 4n can go together. So 7n's plus 4n's would be 11n's. Again, check your order is right and the highest power is in the front. And then it descends from there. All right, so we're going to go here and multiply a polynomial by a, mon a monomial. So I'm going to take that 4c, and I'm going to multiply it into both pieces inside my bracket. Because the 4c would be multiplying to both the negative 3c and the plus 4. So 4c times negative 3c. When we do this, we multiply the front times the front. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And then the c times the c, which is c squared. Again. If you have c times c, we can group them together by saying c squared. The back part of the bracket is the 4c times the 4. So again, the front number times the 4 is going to be 16, but then that c is going to get brought along. So 4c times 4 is 16c. And that's it. That would just be multiplying that 4c into the bracket. Let's try the next one as well. The next one we have a negative 3 in front, and that's going to get multiplied again to everything in that bracket. So multiply that negative 3 into all of those pieces. So here when I multiply the negative 3 times the negative 4, negative and a negative, you guys, what happens there? Positive. Turns positive, right? So negative 3 times the negative 4 is a positive 12, but then that y squared would get brought along. Then that negative 3 is going to have to go to that positive y. And remember, that would be like having a 1y. There can always be a 1 in front, even if it's not there. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and the y gets brought along. 
Then we have negative 3 times negative 7, which would be a positive 21. And that's all we have to do to multiply that negative 3 in is multiply it into every piece. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to take um, about 10 minutes or so to go through these 12 problems. The first section is all about adding and subtracting. And then the next two sections, or the next section is more about multiplying. And then the last section is more a combination of the adding, subtracting, and the multiplying. So I'm going to leave these on the board. You can try them right now. All right, we're moving on then to factors of a polynomial. So here we've got the factors. Um, what it means to factor is really to divide. So we're going to be dividing out um, the greatest common factor in order to remove it from the rest of the polynomial. So if I have 4x plus 12, I could take the 4x plus 12 and arrange it into a rectangle that would look something like this. The dimensions are 4 and then x plus 3. So I could write that as 4 times x plus 3. And if you follow the multiplying that we just did, and multiply that 4 back in, you do get 4x plus 12, like we started with. So please then fill in the blanks down here. The dimensions of each rectangle represent the factors of the polynomial. And when we write a polynomial as a product, we are factoring the polynomial. So again, just dividing out something common, the greatest common factor would be factoring the polynomial. It says then, how can you determine the GCF? So you factor the polynomial completely, and the GCF is in front. So again, when it was 4x plus 3, the GCF was the 4. Okay, finally, there's a couple more blanks there. It says that we say that 4m plus 12 is factored fully when we write it as 4 in brackets x plus 3. So that's the factoring that we're getting to. And this is because the polynomial cannot be factored any further. All right, so you should have these kind of blocks on your page. It says, in arithmetic, we multiply factors together to form a product. For, so for example, if we're going 4 times 7, we get 28. But factoring is removing one of it, uh, one of those two factors, and writing it, again, as its factors. So, we could write it as a product of the factors, saying 28 is 4 times 7. Now in algebra, so when we're dealing with um, our polynomial, we expand it to multiply it. So again, I'm multiplying that 3 in to get 6 minus 15a. But factoring is the opposite. Factoring is dividing something. So when I look at 6 and 15, what number goes into both 6 and 15? So if I divide them both by 3, we get 2 minus 5a. So again, multiplying like this and dividing are opposites of each other. So it works the same way in algebra as it does in arithmetic. So let's look at example 1 here. We're factoring each polynomial. I'm going to look at the GCF of 6 and 9, and that's 3. So I can start by dividing both the 6 and the 9 by 3. Now when I divide the 6 by 3, I'm left with a 2 and an n. And when I divide a 9 by a 3, I'm left with a 3. So the factor, or the factors would be 3 and 2n plus 3. So again, that would be fully factored because I removed the GCF. Let's try the next one. This one's a little bit different. The GCF of 6 and 4, but then there's also some C's in there. So for this one, our GCF is 2C that we divide out. So when I divide 6C by 2C, my C's, I'm removing them, so I'm dividing that C out. My 6 and my 2, I'm left with a 3. My 4C squared, C squared, remember, means that there's two C's up there, but I'm dividing out 1C. So the 4 divided by the 2 is 2. And the c squared divided by the c is still a c. So again, if I removed one of the c's, there's still one c left in that part. So for that one, we removed a GCF of 2c. All right, so to check my answers, we just have to multiply that 3 back into that bracket and see if I get 6n plus 9 like I started with. So 3 times 2n is 6n, 
and 3 times 3 is 9. So yes, I did get back to where I started, so I know that my answer is correct. You can always do that with these factoring problems. Alright, so in example 2, it's the same thing as before, you guys. It's just that this time it's a trinomial. But same thing, we're still looking for the GCF of all the pieces. So when we factor this, I'm looking at the 5, the negative 10z, and the negative 5z squared. Is there a number that goes into all three of those? Krista? 5, great. So what I can do here is I can divide all of these by 5. So if I divide them all by 5, because that's my GCF, 5 divided by 5 should give me a 1. Negative 10z divided by 5 should give me a negative 2 z, and then negative 5 z squared divided by negative 5 would just give me a negative 1 z squared. So again, what we're doing, you guys, is we're just dealing with the leading coefficients. So just those numbers in front, I'm dividing out my 5 by here. Now, when I look at this, there's no other GCF because there's no z in the first part. So I can't remove a z because there's no z there in front. Okay, this time we are factoring this trinomial. And it has a lot of x's and y's and other stuff going on here. So it starts with uh, negative 12 x cubed y minus 20 x y squared minus 16 x squared y squared. Yikes, lots going on. Let's just look at the leading coefficients. What number goes into 12, 20, and 16? Negative 4 x y would be our GCF. So that's what I'm going to divide each piece by. So remember when we're dividing though, you have to look at kind of each piece separately. So we're going to go negative 12 divided by negative 4 will give us a positive 3. If I have x cubed on top and x to the power of 1 on bottom, remember those exponent laws you guys. If I've got x cubed on top and I'm removing one of them, how many x's are left? 2, yeah, x squared, good. Then I've got a y on top and on bottom, but I'm removing it. So there'd be no y left for that first term. Then we have negative 20 divided by negative 4. So when I divide those out, I get a positive 5. Yep. My x's will be gone because I've removed the x. But on top I have a y squared. And I'm only removing one of the y's. So how many y's would be left? One of them. Good. So 5y. Then I have 16, negative 16 divided by negative 4, which would be positive 4. Again, look at your variables here. The x squared, I'm removing one of them, which means I'm left with an x. The y squared, I'm removing one of them, so I'm left with a y. Now, is that my final answer? So no, because I'm missing that negative four x y. That would have to go at the front. So remember, whatever the GCF is that you're dividing out, we write it at the front of the polynomial.